So again, my name is Brad Alexander, Chief of Media Relations with the Governor's Office of Emergency Services. Today we're going to give you a briefing on the earthquake that happened this morning in Napa. And speaking today will be Director Mark Gilleraducci, Colonel Bob Spano from the California National Guard, and John Parrish from the California Geological Survey. I'll turn it over to our director. Okay, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for coming in. I uh, will talk a little bit about the earthquake that occurred today in the Napa area. Um, first of all, let me say that um, really our hearts and our thoughts go out to those who have been impacted by this uh, earthquake. It's, it's uh, you know, these things happen in California, but, you know, we never want it to happen, and, and those that have been impacted today are, are in our thoughts and prayers, and we'll continue to do everything we can to support them uh, as they deal with this particular situation. I um, want to talk a little bit about uh, this, this morning. Uh, I just recently returned uh, from meeting with the um, uh, city of Napa and the county of Napa and uh, doing an overflight of the region uh, that where the earthquake had occurred. And I want to um, kind of give you a little bit of a, a briefing on what I saw during that overflight. As you can imagine, uh, the kind of damage that you would see with an earthquake of this magnitude, uh, a lot of regional uh, impact, but I, I have to say that uh, as much as the uh, as the earthquake was large and had a widespread uh, impact, uh, the damage is not as bad as it could have been. Um, we we are certainly seeing a lot of damage to single family residences, predominantly homes that may have been knocked off their foundation or had a crack foundation or have lost a chimney uh, that have come down and, and, and further damaged the home. Um, broken glass, uh, those kinds of, of activities. We've seen uh, some fires in uh, uh, homes, predominantly in mobile homes. Uh, all the fires have been extinguished at this point. And we've seen a significant amount of things like water main breaks, some power outages in the area, roughly now affecting about 20 to 25,000 people, and road damage uh, throughout the region, both uh, on state roads and on county roads. Most of these this damage is either some buckling in the road or cracks that may have occurred uh, in the pavement as a result of the earthquake or on the on-ramps or off-ramps of uh, bridges where there was some subsidence and uh, some liquefaction and, and you, there was a little bit of a damage getting onto the, uh, the bridges. Our Department of Transportation, Caltrans, and the Highway Patrol as well as the county departments of roads have checked all of the bridges in the area and all of the bridges uh, are safe and secure and there are no damage to the bridges. Um, probably the most significant damage we've seen is in the downtown uh, portion of the city of Napa. Uh, a lot of those buildings there are older structures and we've seen uh, damage to commercial buildings that are predominantly unreinforced masonry type buildings where we've seen either partial collapse or uh, significant uh, damage to those, uh, those structures. And um, most of the downtown area of Napa is uh, been cordoned off uh, as crews go through and do assessments of those buildings, uh, both uh, from a structural engineering standpoint as well as from a, a health and safety standpoint. Roughly uh, um, about something like uh, 90 to 100 homes have been red tagged at this point. Uh, that means those are homes that are uh, not uh, safe to go into, uh, but further assessments are being done in the area uh, and uh, the state has gone into support of uh, the county and the city with structural engineers uh, to accelerate that process. As well in the city of Napa, uh, I'm sorry, in the city of Vallejo, we've seen quite a bit of damage uh, in downtown. Again, old unreinforced masonry type structures uh, in, in one case, we have a three to five story uh, multi-family residential uh, 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 slash commercial structure uh, that has sustained some damage and is compromised. Uh, that, that building is going through an assessment uh, right now as well. The region has uh, uh, utilized significant mutual aid from throughout Northern California, fire and rescue law enforcement, and emergency medical. And um, uh, all of the local and state uh, uh, coordination centers are operational and coordinating with each other uh, so that we can provide rapid uh, assistance where necessary. Um, I could tell you that right now things are, are sort of stabilizing a little bit. Um, there have been some injuries. There have been no known fatalities at this point. 
that we know of. And um, uh, most of those uh, uh, mutual aid assets are continuing to support uh, both City of Napa and City of Vallejo uh, and the counties uh, as appropriate. Uh, our next steps as we move forward will be to, uh, in the coming days, will be to continue with the uh, uh, damage assessment so we can get a very good handle on what the damage looks like and what the cost is um, as, so that we could uh, potentially apply for federal disaster assistance. I have been in contact with the uh, US FEMA administrator in Washington, DC, as well as the regional administrator here in uh, Oakland. Uh, FEMA has been a great partner and has been right there from the beginning supporting us through this process. In fact, uh, they have a whole team that is embedded here at the State Operations Center with us. All state agencies are uh, activated and are operating here in the State Operations Center or in the field. 100% uh, support doing mostly building assessments, but also providing any other immediate life support uh, necessary. Um, I've had discussions with utilities, uh, particularly PG&E in the area through our uh, Utilities Association, and um, uh, they're working diligently with a significant amount of uh, resources in the area to support getting the power back on or any gas leaks that may be occurring in the area sh shut down uh, and make it safe. Uh, lastly, the, the, the water problem, in the, of course, exasperated by the drought, uh, is that we, we, we know we, there are a number of water breaks, and uh, the, the, city, uh, uh, the cities of Vallejo and, and Napa, as well as, uh, as uh, the county, are working closely with uh, the Department of uh, Water Resources and other agencies to ensure that we do have potable water for the people in the community. Uh, and, and uh, places like hospitals and restaurants and other things like that. So um, uh, that's a sustainable situation. If there's any problem with, with water uh, or water delivery, we will support uh, the local authorities appropriately with additional water support. Right now, there has been no, there is no unmet needs that we know of uh, from the communities. And um, uh, we're working very closely with uh, organizations like the Red Cross and um, uh, some non-governmental organizations to support uh, the counties with their evacuation centers. Um, and uh, we'll know really the numbers of evacuate, uh, those in the evacuation centers tonight uh, as they, they start to populate those centers um, uh, because they can't get into their homes. Uh, so with that, um, I'll turn it over to the other speakers right now, and then we'll come back up for questions in a minute. Uh, next is going to be um, Colonel Bob Spano from the National Guard. Good afternoon, and I'd just like to start off by saying on behalf of all the members of the California National Guard, uh, our thoughts and prayers also go out to all those that, in the affected area. Uh, immediately upon uh, this earthquake hitting here this morning, uh, the California National Guard was able to, provi to provide an aircraft for immediate overflight. I accompanied uh, Director Gillard Ducci, amongst other staff members, and we went down to the affected area and were able to do an overflight of the affected area as well as a, a ground assessment. Uh, Director Gilarducci went into detail on that. Uh, the California National Guard also immediately, upon this notification, was able to uh, call up the Northern California forces, uh, send them to their armories for posturing and onward movement should the call up be required. Uh, some of that included the ability to provide, right from the very beginning, the ability to provide emergency communications, emergency uh, operation support, uh, medical support, search and rescue support, uh, water purification should that, um, that capability be required, as well as um, logistic support and security. And as it stands today, the California National Guard is still postured to do that, and uh, we are ready to support our, our state and local partners and any uh, other requests that should come through. And uh, I will be followed now by uh, John Parrish. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, John Parrish. I'm state geologist and uh, chief of the California Geological Survey. As you know, this morning at 3.20, we had a magnitude 6.1 earthquake that occurred probably on the West Napa Fault up uh, near Napa. Uh, at about 6.23, uh, we had uh, compiled a lot of information and we started putting it out on the website. So there's a lot of technical information regarding that fault for engineers and uh, practitioners to uh, take off the website there. Shortly after that, we started uh, putting together field teams 
And uh, CGS has uh, seven geologists out on the site since about 6 o'clock this morning. And we are coordinating our efforts with the U.S. Geological Survey, who have sent some teams up from Menlo Park. Uh, we are transmitting the data that we are finding and uh, bringing that uh, back into uh, the operations center here as well as to uh, both the, the survey centers. Um, as you will probably see, there are <coughs> excuse me, a number of uh, aftershocks that are occurring uh, from this fault or from this earthquake. Uh, we think that there's probably over 50 or 60 aftershocks now, the largest one being a magnitude 3.6. We do not expect that there will be much larger aftershocks, but we do think the aftershocks will continue for several weeks, and they will rapidly decrease in their magnitude uh, and their importance. Uh, early this morning, there was a message that went out saying that there was a 54% chance of a large earthquake occurring. Um, that is correct uh, for the first hour on that. Uh, it rapidly diminishes in the probabilities of there being a large earthquake, and we feel it uh, unlikely now that there will be a large uh, follow-up earthquake to this one. Um, this is a good time to remind everyone that we live in earthquake country. Uh, none of us are immune for this. Uh, you all in Napa all know that uh, you need to resupply your earthquake kits. Um, you need to uh, be cautious of the structures that you go into. When we have these aftershocks, they uh, are occurring in an area where the buildings have already been damaged and weakened by the main shock, and therefore they are much more susceptible to collapse or other uh, falling down um, during these aftershocks. So please, if you think a building looks shaky, uh, do not go into that building without having a, an engineering report uh, and a survey of that structure. Thank you. Okay, we'll be taking questions now if there are any from the media. Hearing none, I will thank you everyone for... Can you talk yep. to us about Well, I, I would just say that we have uh, been working diligently on implementing an earthquake early warning program throughout the state. There are some pilot projects that um, have been, been, been uh, working on uh, in Berkeley and down in Southern California. Um, and I think the one that uh, you probably heard about on the news was uh, one that uh, announced uh, from Berkeley that they had been able to uh, get an, an, a notice within 10 seconds uh, that the earthquake was going to occur. Uh, that wasn't put out broadly or widely to the public because the system is not fully uh, in place yet. Uh, but it does show that the system does have validity and um, will be u utilized as we move forward in the development of the rest of the program. Well, we're actually uh, uh, close to getting it complete here in, in California. Um, we're still working on the numbers with regards to the overall cost, but uh, other countries we have met with uh, Japan and Mexico, uh, particularly our, our neighboring uh, countries where they use an earthquake early warning system, uh, and we've taken a lot of the data that they've provided as they've developed theirs and we're incorporating that into our system, but we're, we really are uh, building a, a more advanced system because uh, of the, the, the kind of topography and demographics California is, the way and, uh, that it's designed, its size and complexity has to be built out a little bit differently. So um, we're working on that and, and we're still looking at that two year time frame to getting that, that system in place. Absolutely. I mean, I think that once this uh, system goes into place, it's going to have an opportunity to let people know, depending on where you're at closest to the fault or so, uh, anywhere from a few seconds up to maybe 90 seconds of warning. And uh, that has to be tied with a, a public education program of what to do when you get that warning, uh, duck cover and hold, 
getting under uh, something heavy so and something non-structural falling down doesn't doesn't injure you. Uh, if you're a, a business or um, uh, some sort of a manufacturer, you could do something like have automatic systems that could shut off your manufacturing lines or shut the gas lines off automatically. So there's both an, a life safety and an economic benefit from having this system in place. Yeah, um, I think we do have a handle on uh, what's happening and that, uh, you know, probably wasn't until uh, midday where we got a good good sense of uh, the fact that the fires have been put out. There's not more fires that uh, power was starting to be restored. When, when we started, we had close to 70,000 without power. We're now around, around 20,000. Um, the reports coming in from local government uh, started to subside. Um, we knowing that local government was getting a handle on uh, their their needs at the local level, uh, and then the overflight uh, meeting with them personally uh, gave me a sense that uh, uh, this was uh, while it was bad, it wasn't as bad as it could be, and it was very manageable from a regional perspective. Can you kind of explain why it wasn't as bad as it could be in regards to the location that the earthquake actually happened? John. Well, naturally, it's the geology that determines how, how good or bad a hazard uh, tends to be. And in this particular area, even though this was a strong earthquake, it's, it's officially cl uh, ca uh, classified as a strong earthquake, the geology of the area is uh, pretty much soft muds. And uh, that tended to dampen the surface uh, shaking and the surface waves that uh, went through the area. And with that lack of ground motion, we got less shaking onto the structures and uh, had more of a confined damage area to the Napa American Canyon area with uh, little damage going beyond that. How far away is it felt? Uh, we have reports of it being felt as far north as uh, Ukiah and as far south as Salinas. Uh, along the central coast, and it certainly was felt up here in Sacramento, as a number of our my colleagues indicated uh, that they were they were woken up by by the shaking here in Sacramento. I, I also want to note that many of the folks uh, that were responding to this at the at the local level in both Solano and Napa County, most of those responders, uh, those those employees of responding, their houses are either damaged or destroyed, and so the, but they're still out there responding. And uh, I was very very impressed with that today at that commitment uh, that they're they're dealing with this whole thing while their homes are they know their homes are in in kind of shambles. So um, uh, everybody's really come together on this, and I got to say the the this really falls into the way we do things uh, in California. It's very well coordinated. Uh, it's consistent with our plans. And we rolled it out efficiently and effectively, uh, but always in support of the, 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 the people who are impacted by the event. And that's, that's really where our focus will continue to be as the days go on, is making sure that any unmet needs get met and that individuals that are impacted by, by this event are, are um, uh, addressed accordingly. Any other questions? Um, what's been the biggest struggle? Um, I think the, probably the biggest struggle has just, is, is really just been, you know, initially, uh, like any time after a quake like this, there's always like a, what I call a dark period, power's out, communications is out, and it takes a little time to get a good, good situational awareness. This is why the question earlier, uh, had, had, had context is because gave, gave us by midday, we got a better sense of really what was happening. You think the earthquake happened at 3.20 in the morning, and it took roughly a half a day to really kind of get our hands around uh, the complexity of the event. So um, I think that that's probably been the biggest struggle so far. Um, outside of that, um, really the Achilles heel of any disaster is, is always the long-term recovery. And uh, that, that's an area that we're all going to continue to have to come together and work to meet additional and new challenges to help that part of the state recover so that we can get back up online and and uh, the economy recovers and people's lives get back to normal. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Thanks, everybody.